Hi everyone. Uh, today we are going to talk about a new concept, uh, the concept of consumer surplus. Now consumer surplus is the amount a buyer is willing to pay minus the amount it pays. So consumer surplus measures the benefits of the consumers or buyers. So it measures the benefits of consumers and buyers. Now consumer surplus is measured using the demand curve. Now consumer surplus, as I said, that it is the amount of buyer is, buyer is willing to pay minus the amount it pays. So when I say willingness to pay or the, the amount, it, amount he or she is willing to pay, what do, what do I mean by that? So in the market economy, there are buyers and sellers. That is in any market, you will find buyers and sellers, right? So buyers represent the demand side and demand for a product or service means that you want that good and you are also willing to pay for it. So in economics, when we say demand, we also mean that not only that you want that good, but also you are willing to pay for that particular good. So how much you are willing to pay for it can be observed from the demand function and or demand curve. So consumer surplus can be calculated by just subtracting amount paid from the willingness to pay. So willingness to pay minus amount paid. So willingness to pay minus amount paid. So you, let's say uh, you would not spend more than 20 taka for a soft beverage, let's say Coke. And you went to the store and saw the price was actually 15 taka. So how much would be the consumer surplus here? It would be 20 minus 15, that is five, right? So this would be your consumer surplus. So. So remember this, that consumer surplus measures the benefits of consumers or buyers. So this is your benefit. Now, another example would be whenever you go to the new market area or opposite of the college where you, it is a common place for, for at least for us to buy clothes or other stuffs. So at a reasonable price, so there, Let's say you are you are willing to pay one thousand taka for two jeans. So two. Now you eventually bought two jeans at the price of seven hundred taka. So here your consumer surplus would be three hundred taka. Now the graphical representation. So we can actually measure the consumer surplus using demand curve. So, and the area under the demand curve and above the paid price, the amount you actually paid for that good depicts your consumer surplus. The area under the demand curve and the above the paid price depicts your consumer surplus. Now, look at this example. So this is your demand curve, not only yours, actually this is the demand curve existing in the market. So in the market, there are many buyers. So. This is the demand function or demand curve in the market. So now the price, the market price is at eight taka. And the, in the market, the willingness to pay, the maximum willingness to pay is, let's say 10 taka. How do we calculate the consumer surplus? So the area below the demand curve and above the paid price. So above the paid price means the market price. So this blue shaded region is actually that area. And, and you can see that this blue shaded region is sort of uh, reflective of a triangular form. So now remember, I already mentioned in the first uh, video of welfare and, welfare and efficiency that you need to revise some basic ge geometry formulas, just basic ones. So here, this is if you can calculate the area of a triangle, so using that formula, actually, we can find out the consumer surplus. So for example, here, half multiplied by the change in price, because we're looking into this bit only. 
All right, so the change in price, so 10 minus eight. So half multiplied by 10 minus eight, multiplied by the quantity demanded. The, so the quantity demanded by the buyers in the market. And here it's five, so multiplied by five. So which should be 10 multiplied by two multiplied by five should be five. So this is your consumer surplus. So, so the buyers in the market are actually at the moment benefited by this amount of money, let's say five taka. Now what happens when there's a change in the market price? So in the market price, so this is market price and this is the quantity demand, right? So in the market price, we've, uh, so it was at eight taka. Now for some reason it declined and now it is at six taka. So imagine this, so the price decreased. So if there is a, if there's a decrease in price level in the market and expectedly so that you can, uh, I mean, there will be more buyers in the market because now you can get that product at a lower price. So you can expect that there would be more buyers. So new consumers are there in the market. So now there will be, a, so you see the new consumer surplus, new consumer surplus is basically this part, this triangle. So first, this one was the old one, old. And this whole bit, the new consumer surplus can be calculated using the same formula. That is half multiplied by, now it's six, right? And maximum willingness was at eight. So the 10 minus six multiplied by the quantity demanded is now at seven uh, units, so seven. It should be five, uh, sorry, half multiplied by four multiplied by seven and it should be 14. So this is your new consumer surplus. New consumer surplus. Now, what is, the, what is this uh, rectangular area or the light uh, orange shaded region? So this is actually the additional consumer surplus to the old consumers. So now that the price is at a lower level, Right, so they can buy that same number of goods. That is, they used to buy five units, the old buyers. Now they are getting that number of units at a lower price. They are getting this at a lower price. So at six taka, they can buy five. So there is an additional consumer surplus to the old consumer. So this is actually reflected by this rectangular area, this, this rectangular area. Now we can calculate this using the formula that we often used uh, to find out the area of rectangles. So similar to that. So here eight and six. So the change in market price multiplied by the quantity demanded of all old consumers. So the quantity demanded of all consumers was at five, right? So this should be eight minus six multiplied by five. And this should be 10. So now the old buyers has a now the now the old buyers have have a new consumer surplus, right? And that new consumer surplus or the additional consumer surplus is actually 10 taka because they can buy the same quantity, which was five, now at a lower price. Now the last bit, the consumer surplus to new consumers. So as I said, when the price falls, you can expect more buyers in the market. That is new consumers would enter the market and they would buy because the price is at a lower price. So this bit, this part, this triangle, the, this represents the consumer surplus to new consumers. And how do we calculate? We calculate this by multiplying half multiplied by the change in market price. So here the change in market price is, change in market price would be eight minus six, which is two. So 
half multiplied by two multiplied the change in quantity demanded change in quantity demanded so this is now seven so the change in quantity demanded would be uh, how much seven minus five equals to two so let me erase this part so half multiplied by two multiplied by seven minus five which is half multiplied by four equals to two so this gives us the consumer surplus to the new consumers so that's how we can calculate uh, different uh, components of this whole consumer surplus uh, concept and try to understand what's happening here this is important that is when price increases what would happen if price increases then what do you think might happen uh, so if price increases then expectedly so that there would be fewer uh, buyers now some of the buyers would leave the market because it, the products is being sold at a higher price so now this is very important the concept of consumer surplus because if you are a policy maker you need to keep in mind about the demand side you need to keep in mind about the benefits of the, of the consumers so the benefits of the consumers so what, but then again not always because it depends on the product that we are talking about if it is something that is unhealthy or then probably policymakers would create a system in the market that would make the that would lower the consumer surplus because they would want uh, people to buy less of that good so yeah so the idea of the concept of consumer surplus is very crucial in the um, in welfare and efficiency so in the next video you will, we will talk about the supplier side that is the producer surplus